I've been on a quest for many years. A search that has taken me through the deep, dark bowels of streaming services like Netflix and Hulu. It's been a tough journey, it's been a dangerous one to be sure. But last night I stumbled upon a film so ugly, so vapid, so completely useless, joyless, soulless, and all around trash, that I can safely say that the search is over. I have found the worst movie in 2024. It's called Uglies. And it's streaming exclusively on Netflix. From the mind that brought you Charlie's Angels full throttle, Mick G is back. And yes, he unironically calls himself Mick G. He has given us a film so shitty, I would be incredibly embarrassed to attach my name to it. Not one to shy away from absolute trash, Joey King is back, reprising her role as generic girl that's supposed to be 15 years old, even though she's in her late 20s. Before I get further, I want to let you know this is going to be full of spoilers, not that there's really anything to spoil other than your time watching that film. And since I have you, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel here, Adam Does Movies, I post movie reviews, rants, live streams every single week. Would love to have you stick around. Inexplicably, there are three writers attached to this movie. I imagine the names are nothing more than aliases for AI generators, because this is the first true movie I have seen where I genuinely think AI has built this movie. Especially the CG backgrounds, the cityscapes, the action scenes. Horribly done. With a 1 hour 40 minute runtime, a PG-13 rating, and about a $6 budget and whatever they could find lying around in grandma's couch cushions, this film looks like it was thrown together in a weekend. It's chock full with green screen. Poorly done, by the way. And the story we're presented is somehow incredibly generic, yet perplexingly dumb as fuck. This is probably based on a YA novel, it certainly feels like it is. And that novel probably feels like it's ripping off 14 other stories, because this has shades of Hunger Games, it's got droplets of Divergent, it's got a smattering of Maze Runner, e everything just culminating into this big orgy of garbage. What we have here is another post-apocalyptic world where pe- <laughs> It doesn't make any sense! In the future, the world is divided by different factions. We're gonna learn nothing about these factions. But one such area, in their infinite wisdom, has decided the best way to go forward is to look pretty. Just look pretty. Unfortunately, not everyone looks pretty at birth. Most don't. So they're gonna get put into this sterile environment, basically a big concrete prison of sorts. Don't really ever see any teachers or workers there. It's just a bunch of ragtag kids trying to get through the day. What do they do? Well, they learn things. There's some education for sure. It's all done via hologram and Instagram. And Joey and her ilk cannot wait to be pretty. That's all they know. They're brainwashed into it. And what do the pretty people get to do? Well, they get to be just pretty and happy. That's it. From this concrete facility, they can look right out the window and see this beautiful booming metropolis of colors and lights and sounds and music and joy and love and laughter and who fucking cares. It looks fake as crap. The whole production's cheap as shit. And I'm not even sure what the struggle is for these people, these kids that are living in this compound. There's no abuse, there's no belittling, they're, they're just kind of there, hanging out. They can go to and fro, they can raid the kitchen. Joey King's character Tally, I think is the name, she goes wherever she wants at any given time. There's no repercussions, there's no problems, there's no punishment for her using this little decoder ring trick to open up the windows and pop out, pop back in. This isn't even half-baked. This is a fourth baked. They didn't even start the oven when they put this in. Her best friend is named Paris. He's ugly too, because he's at the place. But once you turn 16, you get to go to the, the pretty world. Again, Joey King kind of, kind of pushing back the 15 year old look. I think she's 26. And also, not ugly. In fact, none of the students here are ugly which makes the whole thing on its face even more insulting to regular uglies like myself watching. I'm, I'm sitting there watching this shit with my wife. It's another wife pic. She, she heard about it on TikTok, of course. Thanks, TikTok. We're sitting here going, I'm sorry, is Joey King suddenly ugly now? And the guy that she's talking to, a very handsome man, her friend that shows up, very pretty, like, okay, so they don't have an Instagram filter on. So what? They are naturally beautiful people. 
The irony of all this is her friend she calls Nose, even though Joey King has a nose the size of her face. And again, Joey King is a, a pretty woman, but she, she has a large nose. That's that, So it's silly that she's calling another guy Nose. And her name is Squint, because apparently she squints with her giant blue eyes. All of her features are large. It, it's just humorous that the thing they call her is something that's not even defining on her. <laughs> Everything's going pretty well. Tally only has three more months before she can go and be happy with everyone else. Her friend left. She sneaks out to see him at night, but he's different. He's strange. He's not the guy that she remembers. It looks like they suck all the personality out of you when you become a pretty person. Are you understanding the brilliant social commentary on display? I know it's tough to understand that maybe being yourself is truly more beautiful than being a empty, vacuous vessel that just looks good on the outside. This is just powerful stuff all around. The scene that follows is so fucking good. She gets, they, they find out that she's there. It's like, danger, beep, beep. ugly person, wee -oo, wee -oo. minions come out. Wee -oo, wee. She thinks off her feet by grabbing a bungee jacket, I think it's called, a bungee pack, something. She puts it on, she runs and falls off the side of the fakest shit I've ever seen. She's like, Wah! falling. Before she hits the ground, the the shirt jacket thing she's wearing goes and it kind of does a wavy effect and she bounces off a force field into the air. And she does this a couple times, just bang, bang, like she's Sonic the Hedgehog or some crap, until she finally hits the ground from like 20 stories up. She does a boom bounce and then just lands on her feet like they wouldn't be broken. This whole movie's insanity. She's trapped though, there's these fake CG planes after her, clearly created with AI. And this is when the new girl shows up, Shay. Shay is cool, she has short hair and an attitude, she's got a hoverboard, she doesn't take no nonsense from anyone. She's what we call in the business a STRONG FEMALE LEAD. And quite frankly, for a Netflix movie, it's about time. Yeah, um, so half of this movie is going to be the pretty stuff, and then the other half is going to be horrible hoverboarding. All the cool stuff that Back to the Future did all those years ago with hoverboards, completely stripped away in this movie. This does the opposite of that. This makes hoverboards look miserable. These two form a friendship. She teaches her how to use her hoverboard for four seconds. Typically in a movie, you get a montage or you get a scene that breathes a little bit, like in Harry Potter in the first one, when he, you know, he goes after the remember all and Miss McGonagall sees him and this leads to him being on the Quidditch team, like there's story and progression there. No, here it's just, she gets on the board and like, woo, 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 she falls backwards and that's the end of it. That's the end of that scene. But what this is all really leading to is a different clan of people known as the, uh, I, I honestly, don't, as the smoke. I think they're just called the smoke. There are people out in the distance that apparently are themselves. They don't have to augment their faces. They don't have to change their physical appearance. They're just living life, man. Out in the wilderness, man. They got the four seasons. It's great on paper. Shay convinces Tally that through the cover of night, they can go out into a dilapidated building and look out and see a fire. And that is our lead hero, David. David is the leader of the resistance, the smoke man himself. But Tally's got cold feet. She's not gonna go along with this. She wants to be pretty. She's been told that's what you need to do. She wants to be happy so bad. Even though she seems pretty happy where she's at. She tells Shay to piss off. She's heading back to the school because in just a couple days, she gets to go to the ceremony, head into the machine, get physically altered so she can be her new self. But before she gets to, nope, pulled away. There's other plans for her. The head of this entire operation is Dr. Cable. It's a stupid name for this character, played by Laverne Cox. Cable's upset because Shay has gone missing. She's not around to go to her own ceremony, so she needs Tally to go undercover, find Shay, and bring her home. Tally needs to be a spy for this company, and Tally doesn't want to do it, but she's worried about her friend. She's given some misinformation, so she's gonna do it. And all she has to do to find her friend is use these blues clues that Shay left her on a piece of paper, kind of these little sing-song rhymey things, <laughs> which leads to multiple sequences where she has to do a leap of faith plunge with her hoverboard off the sides of cliffs and shit. 
It's ridiculous. She goes through a roller coaster at one point on a hoverboard. <laughs> Grabs the nose of it. Does a 360 spin. And keep in mind, it is very clear she's just in front of a green screen like... And they have the background going like a million miles an hour. When she arrives at her destination short for destination. She's going to fall asleep in the middle of a, like a poppy field or something, a field of white flowers, waking up with CG fire all around her. This is the fakest looking fire you'll ever see in your lifetime. It's terrible. And that's where she's going to meet and fall in love with David. It's so special, so magical. And along this journey, she's going to learn the ways of the smoke people, how they're actually the good guys, and how they're just trying to have a life on their own without the evil corporations taking over. What she didn't know at the time is she was being tracked. She had a little pendant, a little necklace thing, a charm if you must, that Dr. Cable gave her, that tricky minx. And this is when we're introduced to my favorite characters in the film, these, uh, I don't know the names of them. I, I was honestly fast forwarding the film at this point, just stopping every so often to laugh at how ridiculous this whole thing is and at my life because I'm actually watching any of this at all. What a joke I am. Uh, these people come down, the models, and they're in blue, tron-esque suits but there's clearly no budget there's no care to put any time into the action scenes again mick g love or hate those charlie's angels movies i personally think they're really fun schlocky films and there's some crazy action in them he has clearly given up he clearly made a deal a sweetheart thing with netflix or something to just churn and burn some shit out so he can make what he wanted to or he's just desperate for work at this point i don't know but he can do a lot better than this i know that much so these action scenes, one of which includes Shay falling out of a fake ass helicopter ah! through the smoke into the fire from again, like 10 stories up. Perfectly fine, no broken bones or anything. Joey King jumps down in there, grabs her, gets back on the rope just as these guys in the blue suits are running at him. And they're running like normal speed. It's like, <laughs> but the background and the sound effects are like, <laughs> The guy's like drinking a Coke. But in this movie, it would be like. There's like two of those action scenes. This is where I completely fast forwarded to the final few minutes, the crescendo of the film, where the bad guys track down Joey King and her crew and they have a plane right on them. And this is when Tully makes the ultimate sacrifice. She says, don't forget me. You'll see me again. I'm gonna turn into one of the models. Like they're gonna, she's sacrificing herself. I don't know why they can't just kill all these people or take them all. I'm sure it makes sense. Probably not if you watched it completely, but she goes with them. And our final shot of the film is her waking up in her beautiful palace room and she's super smoking hot. She's got gold hair, gold eyes like she always wanted and she just looks at the camera like, see you again in the sequel. I cannot imagine that ever comes. So brave, so uh, so profound. A tear? Uglies 2024, truly one of the shittiest, worst looking movies, wor like terribly acted movies horribly written films I've ever seen. The fact that it came out in 2024 and this is how bad things have gotten is just, it's heartbreaking, honestly, it's depressing. And yes, bad movies are gonna come out. They come out all the time. But to have actual actors associated with it, an actual director that I'm familiar with, like this is just pathetic. It's a big studio. I mean, Netflix put this out. They should be embarrassed. They should be ashamed. And I don't think they are. And that's, that's truly the saddest part of all. Now I want to hear from you though. Did you watch Uglies? Did you know it existed? Probably not, but now you do. Now you do. Please do me a favor. Just try to watch five minutes. I dare you. Let me know in the comments if you saw this movie. Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't. I post movie reviews, commentary, live streams every week. Would love to have you stick around. If you love what I'm doing here, I have a second channel, Adam Does Rants. Very comedic in nature. I'm talking to you still like this, but it's all on first world problems. Like people talking loudly on their phones in public or you not being able to get an ice cream at McDonald's because the machines never work. Things like that. If you love what I'm doing, think about putting a super thanks in this video or becoming a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. YouTube payouts garbage. That's a great way to help support me and my one man band. All right. Hopefully I see you next time. Thank you